how often does a game come along that just improves? Better sound, better graphics, better plot, better mechanics, better everything. It's not easy to do. Paper Mario was a good game. It was a very good game. It was an excellent N64 RPG, and you can count those on one hand even if you've lost three fingers. But intelligent systems just had to outdo themselves. And intelligent systems outdid themselves. As in the previous adventure, it all starts when Mario receives a letter from the princess, which Luigi has to read to him either because Mario is illiterate or because he's just nebby like that. Peachy's gone off on an adventure and entices our heroic plumber to help her out by attaching a treasure map. Oh, beats the hell out of some crappy music box. Mario sets off for the unsettlingly named Rogue Port, where right away he gets into a scrum with some odd birds called the x Knots. Little does he know that these jokers have, say it with me now, captured the princess, and are forcing her to take showers and have uncomfortable conversations with a computer so creepy it would give Hal nightmares. That's right, the x Knots, not Bowser, are behind this plot. And man, is Bowser pissed. Not only are these new invaders alarmingly organized and efficient, they didn't even ask his permission. We get to follow his tirade, along with some traditional bad-mouthing of his subordinates in interstitial cutscenes. Sound familiar? Well, yeah. Aside from the inclusion of a non-Koopa enemy force, it's very much the same formula that made the original Paper Mario such a hit. Seven stars, unique aesthetic, fantastic writing and localization, fun and varied battle mechanics, a killer soundtrack, interesting and off-the-wall characters. All the parts are there. What Thousand Year Door brings to the table, though, is refinement. The paper-centric aesthetic is better and more interactive in this go-round. Through the course of the game, Mario will have to fold himself into airplanes and boats, roll himself into scrolls, and turn 90 degrees and go on edge to navigate the expansive area of Rogueport and surrounding municipalities. While the idea has long been a storybook quest, Thousand Year Door turns it into a real page-turner, literally and figuratively. Setting it further apart from its predecessor is the inclusion of an audience spectating your fights and cheering their heads off when you do something awesome. Landing timed hits, dismounting a jump and looking amazing, or doing an acrobatic freaking pirouette off the handle of your hammer, will get the crowd off their feet and throw their hands or other appropriate appendages in the air, which has the welcome side effect of charging your special move gauge. The more appealing your fights, the bigger your audience gets and the faster your gauge fills. However, there are downsides to a packed house. Sometimes some schmendrick will sneak in with a rock or hammer or some other nonsense to throw at you, requiring swift regulation from the stage. And then, well... I know, Coops! I mean, Gallagher wasn't even that bad. Assisting Mario both in and out of battle are the usual assortment of teammates picked up along the way. There's the worldwise Goomba, who can describe enemy weaknesses, a rebellious Koopa Troopa, a bomb for all your detonation needs, these we're familiar with. New to the party are a Cloud Spirit, a juvenile Yoshi, an alarmingly flirtatious mouse, and a spoiler. Sorry, gotta be careful here. The game takes full control of the medium and isn't afraid to screw with the fourth wall of the construction of the world itself to make a point, or a dramatic effect. Instead, the soundtrack compensates with even more new interpretations of the old Mario standards. You've heard parts of this before, but never in these configurations. From start to finish, Thousand Year Door is an A-grade adventure. It takes everything that its predecessor did and does it better. How often can he say that about a sequel? Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is a player's choice title now, which means it's only 20 bucks, which means there's no reason for this game not to be next to your cube or Wii. Do it, or I get those tuxedoed fellows to go to work on your kneecaps. You've been warned.